In part two of the Snow Rover conversion, we'll see how to install the chute control mechanism. We'll be able to control the direction of the chute and rotate it remotely. For that, we're going to use our custom design chute support bracket along with another mechanism to rotate the chute. Loosen this nut using a 9 16 inch wrench. It may be difficult to use a socket wrench here because of the chute. Press from the top and loosen. You may have to hold the chute in one hand. At some point, you can loosen with your fingers and take it off. We're going to use all these parts. Keep them in the same order so you remember how they go back into place. The next step is to use a 9 16 inch socket wrench and loosen these two fasteners. The next step is to remove this fastener, hold the chute with one hand. There's going to be a washer below. Put it back on the fastener and save it for a later step. Then lift the chute gently and place it down. Next, we'll install the chute support bracket, which is supplied as part of the conversion kit. On the top, it looks like this. One side is rounded, and the other side is flat. This is the bottom, and this is the top. We're going to keep the rounded side facing the front of the machine, and insert the two fasteners you removed earlier into the two holes. Place the bracket like so and tighten these two fasteners. Move the cable out of your way and tighten with the 9 16 inch wrench. After you fully tighten the fasteners, it should look like this, with the lock washer on both of the fasteners. You'll see the fasteners coming out the other end, with the rounded side of the bracket on top facing the front of the machine. The chute control cable assembly is provided as part of the conversion kit. Let's see how this is installed on the chute support bracket.
Place the cable assembly on the bracket like so. Then take the pin and insert it through the corresponding hole. On the other side, we're going to insert a cotter pin. Once inserted, it locks into place and shouldn't come off. The next step is to install this quarter inch fastener. Insert it like so. The chute rotator cable assembly is fastened onto the chute support bracket using this pin, along with this quarter inch fastener. Insert the chute rotator like so. Next, install the chute and insert the fastener through the square hole. Next, install this plate with the washer on top. Push the fastener all the way down. Install the washer with the square hole. Then, install the other metal washer that you removed earlier which we saved in a prior step. Next, insert the spring the small washer and the nut. After installing the lock nut, we're ready to tighten using the socket wrench. We'll use the half inch socket wrench on top and the 9 16th inch wrench down below. Tighten the fastener all the way. When you tighten the fastener and lock nut, notice how the fastener is visible through the spring. You don't want to tighten it too much. If you tighten it too much, then the chute is not going to rotate easily. You want the chute to freely rotate when you pull the cables.
The next step is to install the slider assembly. The slider assembly looks like this, with a slider and carriage that goes back and forth. This is about two inches long, so insert the fastener through the hole and through the slider assembly. On the other side, install the washer and the lock nut. This is a 3 8 inch washer and a 3 8 inch lock nut. Next, insert a U-bolt on the handle. Insert the two ends so it goes in by a quarter of an inch. On the other side, insert a flat washer Then insert the lock washer, then insert the nut. Tighten this fastener using the 7 16th inch socket. Make sure the back of the slider assembly is butting against the handle and tighten the U-bolt fasteners. The next step in the installation process is to insert the chute control cables in this groove within the cable bracket. There is an identical cable bracket mounted on the opposite side of the slider assembly, and this is the slider bar that moves back and forth. In this step, we'll take the cable and attach it to the slider bar. Insert the cable through this slot. Then, insert it through the hole. Next, insert the nut and rotate the nut all the way until it touches the cable bracket, then put the cap on. Now, take the cable and insert it through the slot. This is the right side cable. We have the chute control cable going through the left side cable bracket, with the same on the right side. You should be able to move the slider by hand. We're going to install a stopper so the cable doesn't pop out and do the same thing on the left side as well. We want the cable to remain in place. Install the stopper like so. 
Make sure the cable head is flat and insert the fasteners. On the opposite side, we'll install a washer and a lock nut. Each fastener takes a washer then install a nut. Tighten by hand first, turning a few rotations. Make sure the cable is out of the way. To tighten the fasteners, we'll use a 7 16th inch wrench and a 7 16th inch socket. The stopper is now installed on the right side as well as on the left side. You should be able to push the slider bar and turn the chute. The chute should be able to turn easily on both sides. To the right and to the left. Next, we're installing the actuator using the actuator bracket, a carriage bolt, a 3 8 inch hex bolt, lock washers, and nuts. You'll have two of these for each actuator, one on each end. To install the actuator bracket, first insert the carriage bolt into the slot, then the 3 8 inch fastener like so. Insert the fasteners in the hole on the slider. Put a lock washer on each fastener and then a nut on each fastener. Tighten the nut all the way. First tighten by hand. Then we'll use the 9 16 inch wrench and the 9 16 inch socket. Put the socket on the end and tighten like so. For the carriage bolt, we'll need to tighten it using the 9 16 inch wrench. We don't need the socket. Hold the carriage bolt in one hand as you tighten. After the actuator bracket is fastened, it should look like this. This is the back side, and this is the front side. Next, we'll install the second actuator bracket. To install the actuator, first, Insert the pin on the actuator bracket in the back, like so.
Next, we'll insert a pin at the front. But because the carriage bolt has to move closer to the actuator, we're not yet able to insert the pin. To do that, we need to adjust some screws. To move the slider bracket towards the actuator, we're going to loosen the cable and allow it to come forward. To loosen the cable, we'll first loosen the nut in the back. When we loosen that nut, we'll have more slack in the cable. Once we do that, we can loosen the nut on the opposite side. We'll take the slack and pull it through. Loosen the nut on the opposite side, and you'll notice that you're able to move the slider. As a last step, we need to loosen the cable more. And loosen the nut. So we can now insert the pin by aligning the two holes and inserting the pin like so. Next, insert the split pin in the corresponding hole and push it all the way in. Once it's all the way through, bend the split pin in the back and it should remain in place. We'll now insert the split pin through the pin in the back of the actuator. Insert it from one end like so. On the other end, bend the pin by hand. The pin should now be in place and it shouldn't come out when we push from the other side. You can see the bent pin in the back so it won't fall out. Next, we're ready to tighten all of these nuts. Tighten the one in the front, the one in the back, and all the remaining fasteners. To tighten the fasteners on the stopper, we're using a 7 16th inch wrench and a 7 16th inch socket. You can tighten the fasteners all the way, like so.
This nut is too close to the one next to it, so we'll use the open-ended wrench. You can also use the power on the actuator to move the slider bar, then tighten this nut to make room for a socket wrench there. To tighten the nuts on the cable, we'll use a half inch wrench and a half inch adjustable wrench on this side. Hold one side and tighten the other side, like so. We'll use a cable tie to attach the two cables together. There's an optional cover which you can install right above which makes it easy to clean off the snow.